Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of UHK. This week we are starting on a new theme. I am going to recite for you a prayer that I learnt growing up, going to church on Easter times and Christmas times. That was the main times that I would hear and learn this prayer. So I'm going to say this prayer for you right now. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. That prayer is called the Lord's Prayer. And that's our theme for the next few weeks. We are going to all learn that prayer together in a more modern version. Like I said, I learned that one when I was growing up. So that's the original version that everyone would say when I was younger. But we are going to be learning the more modern take on it. So get prepared. If you don't already know it, get excited because you're going to learn it over the next few weeks. But before we get into the lesson, before we get into doing the theme for this week, we are going to start with our normal stamina exercises. So like always, we have three exercises. We have to do each exercise 10 times to start with before then we can start again. We have our 60 seconds to see how many times we can get through each of our exercises. But let me show you what the exercises are. I've got a picnic rug here for myself because we have to get down on the ground and my grass is so muddy from all of the rain and just everything that's been happening lately is it's been winter. So I'm just going to fix up my rug because it's moved in the wind and then I'll get started with showing you guys. Okay. So we are starting with squats. So we need our feet shoulder width apart. And then we are going to squat down like we're sitting on a chair and then back up. So just like this, ready? One, two, three. You guys keep going, do 10 of those. Next, we're going to burpees. If you don't know what a burpee is, what we're doing is we're jumping up and then we go down, feet out and back up. 10 times for that again. And then the last one is called mountain climbers. This is going to be sort of like we're running on the ground, doing high knees, high knees like this, but we're going to be in plank position. So I'm going to show you. So we get down like this, and then we'll start going like this. You are going to do that 10 times. So that means one, when I go to do my high knees, it's like one, two. So each leg makes one. So 20 all together if you're counting both legs. Okay, I'm already puffed out from just showing you the exercises. So I'm gonna see how I go with my 60 seconds. You see how you go. Let's start in five, four, three, two, one. Can you do it? Go. Okay guys, so I told you that that first couple that I showed you as an exercise tired me out. And oh boy, doing a whole 60 seconds of that, oh my goodness, I don't know how you went, but oh, even doing my gymnastics two times a week did not help me. Okay, how did you go? Let me, let me know, send us, send us some videos if you want us to um, have an idea of how you went. So we have got a new 
game, new activity, new competition, I guess, for you. So each time you watch a video each week, leaders are going to be hiding face masks. You know, the face masks that we have to wear as we go outside for, um, uh, with the coronavirus being around. We're all gonna be like, hiding them around in our videos. So what we want you to do is each time you see it in a new place, you need to count that as one. So if you say, see it in the same place, so pretend I had mine hanging on my clothesline over there, that's only one place. If you, if you see it in that same place three times in the one video, it only counts as one. So you're gonna count how many different places you see leaders having the masks. Once you come up with your final answer at the end of all of the session for the day, email marie at unihillchurch.com.au to let her know how many different places you saw the masks. Speaking of Marie, how about we go over and see what she's cooking up for us today and hear her version of the Lord's Prayer. Let's go. Have a good day. Hey guys. Well, as you just heard, Rachel has talked about these masks. Mine is in plain sight. Have you seen it? I've just come across a masked character. Hello. Hey, Nate. Um, I just thought we are talking about the Lord's Prayer with the kids this week. Do you know anything about the Lord's Prayer? Yes, I know that it's in the Bible. Correct. Anything else? I know that Jesus taught us how to say it. Correct. And do you actually know it? I do. Off by heart, in fact. Off by heart? Okay. Let's hear it. Let's see if you can. Yes, it's our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That is excellent. Well, Rachel knows it. Nathan knows it. Let's see whether or not any of you know it. We'll catch you in the kitchen in a minute. See you guys. Well, good morning again. Wasn't it great that I met Nathan on my journey and he knew the Lord's Prayer. We are starting that this week. And as Rachel mentioned, we, well, we know it in Old English our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to be putting that prayer up on our Facebook page and I hope if you don't know it already, you can learn it. There is a more modern version though and I'm going to put that up as well so that you can learn the one that you like. Often you hear the traditional version like Rachel said and like I said and like Nathan prayed because I don't know, it's tradition and you might like to learn it the way it is. But more importantly, we're going to be learning about what each part actually means. And today, we're going to start up with the first part, which actually suits the theme for today. Today is, yes, Father's Day. And the first part of the prayer talks about our Heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven. Doesn't mean he's drawing in heaven. It is basically our Father who is in heaven. May your name always be kept holy is what it basically means. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. We're going to dig into it. But before we do, we're going to dig into something else. This is something your parents will actually love. And I'm moving away from sweets. Oh, we are actually going to be cooking something that I am sure you can share with the whole family, even for lunch, if you have everything there. Now, this week, we definitely need parents' help because we are using things like these, which, you know, could mean these get damaged. So let's make sure we get our parents' help 
and that they're standing by to watch us as we're doing it. Now, what we need today, we're making wedges and who doesn't love a potato wedge? Mm -mm, really great. So what we're going to do is, it, the recipe asks for eight potatoes. And I figure one potato per person or half a potato per person, depends on how much people like to eat. So if you don't have a big family, eight potatoes is a lot to cook. And so you'll have to modify the recipe. Here's where your maths comes in, guys. You might have to halve it if you're only cooking four for four. You might have to quarter it because we're only cooking for two. But anyway, you need eight potatoes to start with. I'm using these red potatoes because they are really good for roasting, all right? So start with those. Now, to roast them and to make them nice and creamy on the inside, but also crisp on the outside, a good idea is to boil them first of all. You could either boil them on the stove top or you put them in the microwave. Now, I did it in the microwave, but before you do that, you need a skewer or a fork, poke a few holes in it, and then put a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of water there, just a tiny bit of water in it, put them in the microwave for about three minutes, cover them because they might explode if they're smaller potatoes and you don't want potato all over the microwave because mum will not be happy. Um, and then we basically get on with the rest of the recipe. Now I already did that, so mine are already pre-boiled. And I'm using four potatoes here. What you need to do is get your potato and cut it in half. Now this is where you have to be careful guys. Just in half and in half again. Now they're partly cooked, they're not totally cooked. They're still what I call al dente, but al dente is with pasta. It's sort of like soft, easy to cut, but not, not sloppy on the inside. I don't know what to saw that. Anyway, you cut it in half and then you cut it in half again. So I cut it into quarters and if I cut each of those quarters, eek, into another in half again, what does it make it? I cut my potato into, that's it, you've got it, eighths, all right? So I have my potato wedges, they're cut into eighths. Now comes the next part, I'm only gonna do, show you with one at the moment because I wanna show you how to do the rest of it. I need to clean my fingers, I forgot to get my cloth. All right, so in a pan here, we're going to baste our potatoes, we need, um, it was a half a cup of oil. So I'm just going to pour the oil into here. And remember, I will put the quantities up on at the end of today and you'll be able to see that so you won't miss out on it. But write it down right now if you want to. And then we need a third of a cup of sweet chilli sauce. Now, sweet chilli sauce... Oh, no, that's, that's for later, sorry. That's, that's for making our dip. We need butter, that's it. We needed 100 grams of butter melted. I did it in the microwave, covered it, and here we go. I'm putting it in, mix it with the oil. Okay, mix it round. And then we're going to add some spices. Now, you can add whatever you like. If you've got chicken salt, put chicken salt in it. I'm going to be using, you could use something like Moroccan seasoning, but I'm not going to use that one today. I'm going to use a bit of Cajun, um, I'm not Cajun, cumin. Oh, I'm getting it all wrong today. And Cajun spice. And I said that because I looked at it. This one's a little bit spicy, but your parents might really like it. Now, to that, you add a tablespoon of each. Okay, so here I go in there. It's going to be nice and spicy. And we use that to baste and rub all over. Here we go. A tablespoon of those. Our potatoes. Okay, so I've only just cut up one in front of you. Just for time's sake. And then we baste our potatoes in that. Okay. And once they're all really well coated, I'm just going to break that up. And you might want to do just one potato at a time, but you don't have to do one potato at a time. You could put them all in and evenly coat. All right, then you put them onto a baking tray. And I'm just going to get a pair of tongs. There we go. Put them onto a baking tray. Now, because they are basted in oil and butter, you don't need to do anything else. On the baking, the baking paper is there to stop them sticking to the pan. And you put them into a really, really hot oven for about, try it for about half an hour. And then after half an hour, test it, see if they're as crisp as you want them, maybe turn them over. 
you have 45 minutes. If they're already partly cooked, you don't need to cook them for that long. If they, if you didn't boil them or put them in the microwave beforehand, you'll have to cook them a little bit longer. They will go in the oven. While they're in the oven, you can make a lovely dipping sauce for them. Again, this is going to be a little bit hot, but it's not too hot, okay? So you don't have to do something that's really hot. We've got a sweet chilli sauce. They can come in different strengths and heat. This one is very mild, you will love it, and everybody else in the family will. You need a cup and a half of sour cream, not normal cream, sour cream. Now, if you don't have sour cream and you've only got normal cream, what you can do, if you've got thick cream, double cream, you can add a little bit of lemon juice, like a tablespoon of lemon juice, stir it in, and it sort of makes it sour, but it can curdle it too. So you, there's tricks to the trade, but sour cream definitely goes well with wedges. And our sweet chilli sauce. And we need a third of a cup of sweet chilli sauce. And it can be a bit difficult to come out. Okay, so simply measure it up, pour it in with your cream. This is the easiest of dips ever that you could ever make and stir it through. Now, this can also, if you like guacamole, you can get an avocado, you can mash it, and you can mash it into this, or you can make two separate dips. You make one like this with, you can have a little bit less sweet chilli sauce and mash in an avocado, and it is absolutely divine. But, you know, it's what you've got in the house or what your parents are willing to pay or buy um, that counts. And you might not like avocado. I love avocado, and avocado is good for you. So here we go. Now, when you're ready and it's ready to be served when your potatoes are ready, you simply put your sour cream dip into a dipping bowl and you'll put your potatoes around it and serve it up so everybody can enjoy it. I'm going to come back a little later with our cooked potato wedges and our sour cream dip and I might actually serve it up to Dale because it's meant to be a special day for guys today. But you will see the end result in a little while. For the moment, let's see what you've got to know today. See ya. What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey there kids, I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. I'm so excited to start a brand new series called Teach Us to Pray. We're gonna learn the Lord's Prayer together. You ready? Today, we're learning all about how God is our Heavenly Father. So anytime today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. God our Father is perfect. God is our Heavenly Father. And I'm here to tell you, he's a good, good father. Here's who he is. Here's who he is. You know he is. He's good. He's loving. He's absolutely perfect. How cool is that? So anytime today you hear somebody ask you what you got to know, you tell them. God, our father is perfect. And that right there is what you got to know. This is Big Ray, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Mm. Mm. What you gotta know. Hey kids, what time is it? Yay What's happening, New HK? So good to be back. I hope you're all doing well. So good to see you all again. It's been way too long. I'm sure all of you have grown at least three centimeters since the last time I saw you. Um, but for today's activity, I've got something special for you all. We're gonna play a game called Shock Treatment. Now, 
let me explain what that is. Shock treatment. Essentially what we're doing for Father's Day is uh, we're gonna go out and uh, surprise our father or if father's not there, let's, let's go surprise mum, foster parent or parent guardian. You know, they all need love too. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna give you guys 60 seconds to run out, give them a hug, give them a kiss, um, and for those of you, this is a hot tip, for those of you who have multiple uh, siblings, so one or two uh, brothers or sisters, if you're all doing this activity together, to beat the 60 seconds, why don't you just all do a massive group hug? That way you'll beat the time and you'll get back here, you'll get back, um, and, and we can continue on with the lesson. But, for those of you who it's just you, Man, you get to use that 60 seconds and give the best hug that you possibly can. So make the most of it. But before we go, before we start running out, why don't we do a countdown? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Well, thank you, Justin. That was, um, I don't know whether you call it a game or an activity. Whatever it was, it was a blessing. Somebody got blessed if you did what Justin just told you to do. If you ran in and out a few times, they got blessed heaps. If you just did it once, I'm sure they were pretty shocked. So no wonder he gave it that name. But well done. And even when we're finished today, do it again. Well, welcome to our series, which is called Teach Us to Pray. We're going to be learning this very important prayer from the Bible, and it's actually called the Lord's Prayer. And I want to ask you, do you know why we call it the Lord's Prayer? Well, I'm going to answer too. It's because it's a prayer that Jesus prayed. But it's more than just a random prayer that Jesus prayed. It's a prayer that Jesus prayed to show his te uh, or to teach his disciples how to pray. Now, before we get into it, I want to uh, let you know that we we have a goal. Our goal through this teaching is to help you memorize the Lord's Prayer. We're going to learn it little by little each time we get together. So today we're focusing on the very first line, which is "Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed." be thy name. You're going to learn all about how God is our amazing, awesome, heavenly Father. But right now, I want you to sit back and get introduced to our theme today. <laughs> My name is Peyton and I'm going to be hosting this series called Teach Us to Pray. Prayer is such a big part of being a Christian. It's one of the coolest things ever. Prayer is when we get to talk to God and He gets to talk to us. For a lot of kids, prayer seems like such a hard thing to do. They don't think they know how. They think that they have to do it exactly like adults do. First, there is the big words prayer person. Oh, dearest Heavenly Father. I beseech thee for thy divine attentiveness. Receive my sincere adulation as I celebrate your celestial glory. Let the heavenly realms be opened and allow me to receive thy vicissitudes upon my celebration and proclamation of your divine nature. 
Amen. And amen. Wow, those are some big words. Or maybe you've seen the loud prayer person. Dear God, I love you so much, Lord. God, you are so faithful. I love you. Amen. Yikes. Or maybe they've seen the repeater prayer person. And God, I love you, God, and I thank you, God, for this day, God. And God, I pray that you would forgive me, God, of my sins, God. And I pray, God, that this day would be just so wonderful, God. And God, I just praise you, God, and I just thank you, God. In Jesus' name, God, amen, God. A lot of kids see people praying that way. They think that their prayers are not good enough. Well, that's just not true. There's not a certain way to pray to God. God is our best friend. We wouldn't think that we have to talk to our friends like that, so why do we have to talk to God like that? Now, I'm not saying that those prayers are wrong, because they're not. I'm just saying that we don't have to pray exactly like others for God to listen to us. In this series, we're gonna be learning how to pray by studying what we call the Lord's Prayer. Now, this isn't the only way to pray, but it's a sample prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples that we can follow too. We're gonna be looking at the Lord's Prayer piece by piece and see how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Well, it's time for you to get into your lesson today as you learn about the Lord's Prayer and how awesome your Heavenly Father is. Well, this is Peyton reminding you, you can pray every single day. See ya! Now, if you've got your journals out, you might like to write a heading and call this the creation story. It comes from Genesis chapter 1 and right through to Genesis chapter 3. So Genesis 1, 2 and 3. And I want you to understand the first line of the Lord's Prayer by showing you that God is the Father. God is the creator of all things. This story begins long ago, even before the actual creation of the world. In the beginning, there was nothing, nada, zero, zilch, other than God. God always existed and he always will exist. But one day, God decided to do something incredible. He decided to create the universe. He didn't need any tools or supplies to create the universe. He did all of this by just speaking. God said, let there be light. And suddenly there was light. The sun to the light, the sun to light the day and the moon to light the night. God spoke the word and the oceans were formed. Trees, plants, animals and every living creature were, were created. But God was not finished yet. Well, God wanted to have a relationship with his creation. He wanted to demonstrate his love in a real way. So God decided to create human beings. He spoke the word and created man. A little later, he created a woman and the man God called Adam. The woman he called Eve. Adam and Eve had a wonderful life. Could you imagine it? They had everything they needed. God provided for them in every possible way. His desire was to be a loving father to them. Just like a loving parent, he wanted to keep them away from trouble. So he created a very important rule. God said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not, I repeat, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because if you eat from that, you will surely die. Well, that's pretty easy. Just one rule. All Adam and Eve needed to do was obey God. And he promised to provide for them and protect them. But unfortunately, they didn't obey him. But fortunately, God did not just turn away from them. God still acted as a loving heavenly father to them and to all human beings. Sometimes humans make good decisions and obey God. Other times they don't. No matter how human beings act, God never stops loving them and being their heavenly father. 
we're going to learn just what kind of heavenly father God really is. You're going to learn how much he loves you and wants to be your heavenly father. <laughs> Voila! It is I, the amazing master illusionist and prestidigit, prestidigit, magic guy, presto changeo. I'm here to razzle dazzle your senses and boggle your mind. Nothing up here, nothing up here, and nothing up here. Today is something very, especially, um, special. Yes, I'm going to teach you the power verse. Today's power verse says. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6, 9. Ha <laughs> ha! What an amazing powerverse, boys and girls. But just like I do in my sold out shows all over the world, really in my living room with my grandma, I'm going to make things poof disappear right before your very eyes. I will make words from the power verse disappear with the help of my handy dandy sidekick. <whistles> hocus pocus, I'm so glad you are here. You will be helping us with this mind blowing disappearing trick. Hokey, say hello. The name is Hocus Pocus, not Hokey. Not pokey. No, oh, whatever. Let's just get on with the power verse. Yes, let's take a look at it. Ah, yes. Now, which words should I make disappear? Hmm, how about this one? This one? And this one? Ha <laughs> ha! Now, let's see how well you remember it. Kids, you are going to say the power verse again with Hokey! It's Hocus Pocus! You're going to say the power verse on the count of three. One, two, a three! Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6, 9. Ha <laughs> ha! That was pretty amazing. You were able to say the power words with the disappearing words. But prepare to be amazed! Er, I'm going to make even more words disappear before your very eyes. Like this one. And this one. Okay, okay. You said it once with the disappearing words. But let's try it again. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6, 9. Beautiful job. Thank you, children, and hocus pocus. You are so welcome. And now, for my greatest trick of all time, I'm going to make myself disappear. This is Presto Changeo saying, now you see me, now you don't. Bruta, zuta, zut. Our Father in Heaven Prayer is a very important part of a Christian's life. Prayer is where we talk to God and He talks to us. You don't need any special tools to talk to God things like a phone. You just talk and he hears you. Isn't that awesome? But there are many people who feel like they just don't have what it takes to pray. They think prayer is something really hard to do or at least to do the right way. The disciples actually struggled with the same issue. They felt like they didn't really know how to pray and so they said to Jesus one day in Matthew chapter 6, Lord, Teach us to pray. And that's exactly what he did. He gave them a sample prayer to show them how easy it was to pray to God. And we call it today the Lord's Prayer. The very first line in the Lord's Prayer says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're going to look at each part of this sentence to help us understand it better. In doing so, we will learn some important things about God to remember when we pray. And the first thing is, 
God is our heavenly Father. The first two words of the Lord pra Lord's Prayer says, Our Father. God is the Father we all share. Fathers are very important in our lives. Fathers are supposed to protect us, provide for us and love us. Our Heavenly Father does all those things and much more. Maybe you grew up in a home or you live in a home without a dad. Well, God is the dad you've always had and always will have. He will never leave, he will never turn his back on you, and he will never fail you. He is your Heavenly Father. An important thing to learn from this first sentence in the Lord's Prayer. God is in heaven above all things. The Lord's Prayer says, Our Father, which art in heaven. The Bible teaches us that God is in heaven. We don't know exactly where heaven is, but we know that there is, it is not here on earth. But even though God is in heaven, the Bible teaches us that he sees everything that happens here on earth. He knows every single detail about everything on earth and he is greater and more powerful than anything on earth. God is in heaven above all things. His power is above all powers. He knows the future. He knows everything that has happened in the past. He is wiser, stronger and higher than anyone on earth. Why is that important? Because when you're in trouble or you need an answer, you can depend on God. He's above all things, all sickness, all enemies, all problems. He is in heaven above all things. So we've learnt our Father which art in heaven. The next part says, hallowed be thy name. You probably have never used that word hallowed before. This simply means God is holy, perfect in every way. We are to honour God and his name because he is holy. Holy means without sin or defect, meaning perfect. God is holy, he is perfect, he has no flaws, he makes no mistakes. We can trust him because he will never leave us or forsake us. He is perfect. That means he will always be by our side when we're going through the toughest of times. It doesn't mean we will always get the answers we want. It doesn't mean we'll always live a perfect life. But we can trust he will never leave us or he'll never forsake us. The Lord's Prayer gives us a guide as to how we should pray. We should always begin our prayer honouring God for being our holy heavenly Father. We should honour and worship him for who he is. He is holy. He is perfect. He is our amazing heavenly Father which art in heaven. God is our heavenly Father. He is our creator. And he has been here from the start and he'll be here in the end. And we need to acknowledge that he is in control, even when things aren't going the way that we want them to, or our lives are not as perfect as they should be. God is the creator. He is around for us. Guys, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, May your name always be kept holy. Thank you, God, for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you that you are perfect in every way. Help us to trust you and understand your place in our lives. Rewind! So guys, as our creator, the Heavenly Father wants to have a relationship with us. And like with anybody that's in a relationship, you like to communicate. He wants us to communicate with him. It doesn't mean you have to pray long, fancy prayers. It just means talk to him. Tell him your pains. Tell him your worries. Tell him the great things that are happening in your life. Thank him for things. It's just talking. 
So let's get talking and just see how much you learnt today. Let's rewind. Here we go. First question today is, according to our lesson today, God is our what? Is he our earthly father, our heavenly helper, or our heavenly father? And the answer is, he's our heavenly father. We all share him. And man, does he have a lot of children. According to our lesson today, God is holy. Does that mean he's special in every way? Or perfect in every way? Or super duper in every way? Correct. God is holy, which means he is perfect. The word hallowed is not used much these days, as you know. But what does it mean? Does it mean holy? Does it mean empty or does it mean high? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Is it holy be your name, empty be your name, high be your name? And the answer is holy be your name. Hallowed means holy. I hope you learnt something new today and I really hope that you can learn the Lord's Prayer along with us. It is something that will help you in troubled times when you don't know what to pray, when you're stuck for words, when you're hurting so bad and you can't think of what to pray. You can say, I think I'm just going to say the Lord's Prayer. Go for it, guys. What's well, the first line? Let's say them together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hey guys, it's me back again. I just want to talk to you now about what we are saving up our money for at the moment. So, like normal, we, if we were at church, we would be bringing some money with us to church and putting it in our ice cream cones. But obviously at the moment we can't do that. So, what we want you to do is still be saving up your money because we still want to be able to support our missionaries. This term, the missionary that we are supporting, is Vincent Borromeo. He is from Italy. Well, he's in Italy. That's where he lives. That's where he does all of his work. But why does Vince do what he does? The reason is because God has called him to do it. It is his mission to do. We are going through the letters of the word mission and we are up to the very first S in mission. So that S is standing for salvation. What we're going to do is like we have been, we're going to read from the Bible. I'm just going to open it up to Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and read that for you. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So in regards to salvation and why Vince is doing what he's doing, he is out there making disciples of all nations. He is working with a company called Youth Alive who is about bringing the gospel, the good news of God. The gospel is the four first books in the New Testament. So Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are those first four books. And that is the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus coming to die on the cross for us and give us eternal life that is what Vince is about he is bringing that good news message to people so that they can make the decision to follow God realizing that we are only here because of his grace he didn't need to send his son to die for us we don't deserve it we have done nothing in our lives to deserve him doing that for us but he did it just because he loves us and Vince's message and his mission that he is doing is all about telling people about that so that they can come to salvation like we have now next week we need some raw spaghetti raw sp spaghetti stands Str strands man my words are not working today raw spaghetti strands and four paper cups now you were told 
last week that you needed to bring those things for this week. That was a little bit of an accident, but this week I am 100% sure that you need your raw spaghetti strands and your four paper cups for next week. So at least you're prepared already. If you had them for this week, you'll be ready for next week now. And now, I also have a new challenge to tell you about. Obviously, we're all in lockdown. We're all struggling through this COVID time and our quarantine that we're going through. So what we are do going to do is a thing called the COVID shake dance. Now we've got a video to show you, I'll send, that, send you guys off to watch that in just a couple of minutes, but you will get prizes if you're brave enough to give this a go. I haven't had a chance to watch the video of it yet, so I'm actually not entirely sure what it's like, but hearing that you have to be brave enough to do it, I'm not sure that I can say that I am. Like I'm not big on dancing, but I am super excited to see all of you guys give it a go and yeah, how it goes for you. But what you have the chance to do is there are steps to the dance and you need to have 1.5 meters, which is the distance that we have to stay apart from each other. Our social distancing is 1.5 meters. You can get 1.5 meters of reflective tape sent to you by Mama Marie. She has it at home. All you have to do is send her an email promising that you are going to give this challenge a go and she will send some reflective tape to your house so that you can have a turn at this dance. So let's remind you of the email that you need to send it to. It's marie at unihillchurch.com.au. Send your email. Make sure you give the dance a try if you get the reflective tape from Mum Marie. But we are all so excited to see what you guys have to do and let's shake out the COVID quarantine so that we can all get back together. We'd love to see you soon. Bye. They look brilliant, nice and hot and crispy out of the oven. Just, I need somebody to come and eat it. Hey, so. what are these? Wow, wedges, my favorite. Can I have some? Definitely. Mm, wow. And what's in that dip? It's like chili. It is definitely sweet, sweet chili. chili. Um, I ne noticed that you've left all the crumbies in there. It's a good idea maybe, guys, to get a spoon for the serving. But anyway, what do you give the score, Dale? What's the score? I'd give them 11 out of 10. Should they make them for their parents? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They're going to love them. I love them. And don't worry about the mess in the dip because I'm going to finish it off. Well, it looked like Dale really enjoyed it. He basically, nearly, well, licked the plate clean. Have a look at it. And it was nice and spicy just the way he liked it. Now the thing is, guys, if you don't like spicy food or the people you're making it for don't like spicy food, just sprinkle the potatoes with salt or chicken salt or something like that, something that's not spicy and hot because the Cajun spices are quite hot, as I said before. So enjoy doing that. If you do create them, please take a photo of your creations and you making them because, and send them to me, marie at unihillchurch.com.au because we love to see what you're making. And we also love to see you getting involved other ways. We had that competition that Rachel mentioned right at the start and that is to try and find the mask. Where's the mask? It's like, where's Wally? Look for the mask throughout our videos each week. They can be hidden absolutely anywhere. And I was quite impressed. It was quite funny where um, Rachel had hidden hers in different places. Count the number of times you see them when they're in different places and list them in your journals. So at the end, send to me, I saw it four times, I saw it on, and I'm not gonna give it away. 
I'm going to saw it here, I'm gonna, I saw it there, I saw it here, and I saw it there. If you are correct, your name will go into a hat with other people that vote correct that week, and I will draw a name out each week. That person gets a prize. So keep your eyes peeled. Look closely, because they will be in some very interesting and difficult spots to try and work out where they are. And just a hint, there's none in my picture at the moment, in case you are looking. All right, the final thing is, we have another competition. It's called the Quarantine Shake. We all want this COVID time to be over. And we need people to get on board doing the right thing. This song will help us remember what those things are to shake this quarantine time. If you want to get involved, what I want you to do is contact me at marie at unihillchurch.com.au and I will send you a piece of reflective tape. You dance in the dark to, with that reflective tape. But if I send you some of that stuff, you've actually got to use it, okay? And dance in the dark, do the dance according to the music, not to a different song, it has to be the COVID shape. Get involved, do it, send it to me. Guys, there's always prizes involved, there's always rewards, we have fun together. Hopefully we see you, hopefully I hear from you. Let's have a look at the quarantine shake now. See you guys. the safest place, hand wash often, don't leave a trace, avoid your mouth, don't touch your face, keep your distance, six feet space, and elbow cough, save the human race when you do the quarantine shake, save the human race when you do the quarantine shake, save the human race when you do the quarantine shake, save the human race when you do the quarantine shake, 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 the quarantine shake, 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 the quarantine shake. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is.
And 